What's up, what's up, what's up, family? This is Juan J coming at you for just a brief moment. Um, just getting myself settled, uh, just getting in. Um, I know I spoke to you earlier about uh, the questions I was going to answer for that panel. Right now, I think it's a little bit too late for that. Um, what I will do is this I can't even find the questions right now. So I promise you, I promise you, it went tomorrow. I will try to locate those questions. I will try to locate those questions. And I will try to answer those questions that I said that I would uh, answer on this evening. I know it's kind of late. Um, I, don't, I don't even know why I put the questions. I'm, looking, I'm, I really, I'm going through all my emails right now and I cannot locate those questions. I'm on my Gmail account, I'm on my Hotmail account. I'm checking all these dates and I still cannot find those questions. Um, but I would encourage everybody to go to Lone Wolf Firearms training on Facebook. All the services are listed. I would also encourage you to go to Making Dreams Come True LLC, which is a totally different page than the Lone Wolf. But it deals most over for encouraging people. Um, speaking to your, uh, to your true self, your true self. Um, again, um, I knew I really, really, really wanted to come to you tonight and answer those questions. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe the maybe the emails. Have a, uh, I don't know. I can't find those questions. I can't find those questions. I just can't. And it's funny. I can't see nobody that's, that's come on live. I see some people, but I don't see nobody at all. I don't see nobody at all. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, be, I'm not understanding this whole live feed no more. You can tell when people was coming on board. I can't tell. So again, with that said, family, um, I will come live tomorrow. Maybe sometime in the afternoon. Not real late at night. If I can find those questions. And when I find those questions, that, that was uh, on the panel that I will answer specifically how I would have answered them. Um, again, I would encourage everyone to please go to my page and um, look up the look up the uh, look up the uh, the Zoom look up the Zoom uh, town hall meeting that we did on Saturday uh, yesterday look it up. Again, we talked about police brutality. We talked about qualified immunity. We talked about absolute immunity. We talked about should we defund the police? Very well thought out answers. Um, and I think that uh, that's the conversation that uh, we just need to have. More conversations like that. Um, But watch this, family. Let me, let, me, let me be very clear. I think that we need to realize this, that we're living in some very, very uh, unstable, unpredictable, and dangerous times. And I, I know that we want so bad to go back to how things was prior to COVID-19. Um, but we're not going back to things as it was COVID-19. Uh, we've gone from a reset to a restructuring. Say this again. We've gone from a reset to restructuring and the powers that be those who I want to say this thing right those who want to see America a certain way they have to have us on board for it to take place um, again again when you go to your stores whether you go to a dollar store a department store a grocery store a hardware store um you're hearing on the mics everywhere about social distancing, social distancing. 
you're hearing on the mic about covering their face. That is what you call a restructuring, man. They're trying to get everybody to be on the same page. Um, one of my biggest concerns, though, is the constant fear that they keep promoting through the radios, through the television, and through uh, on your social medias. Um, you're, just, you're just being constantly being fed a diet of fear. And I personally do not watch a whole lot of television. I don't listen to a lot of radio. I do, I, I, I do just as much listening to just find out what's going on. Then I'm, then I'm back into my training. I'm back into trying to train, trying to teach, trying to train as many people as I can how to defend themselves, how to protect themselves um, in case they are encountered with uh, somebody who's trying to kill them, uh, harm them, uh, them or their families. So I don't, I don't, look, I did policing for 20 some years, right? So every day when I woke up, I always knew there was a possibility I would not come back home. Every police officer deals with that reality. You know, you may not come back home. And then we always would say, whatever you do, you want to come back home. So I bought that same mindset from policing to trying to empower, embolden, strengthen our community or whoever wants to know how to be a responsible gun owner, a responsible gun user. Because again, you know, we're sitting on these talents, we're sitting on these gifts, and a lot of us are just taking good talents and gifts to the grave. Why? You know, we get a little retirement check, a little pension, we don't put our time in, you know, we just, hey, you know, I done did mine. Look, it ain't about you no more. It's about the kids. It's about the survival of the species. It's about the survival of our black collective. You know, it's about us being selfish. Again, I'm, I'm really pushing this being selfish piece because I'm not caping for too many people other than foundation black Americans right now. Yes, I love everybody, but I'm caping for us right now because we need the most help. We're the most under attacked. We're the first ones fired. We're the last ones hired. We're allegedly the face of COVID-19. Um, we are the ones being shot and gunned down by the police. And if others are being shot and gunned down, they're not putting their stories on the television. They're putting our stories, our face on television. Um, you know, um, everybody's getting legislation but us. So, right now, I got a major chip on my shoulder. A major chip on my shoulder. I want for us. Exclusively. Period. And I'm willing to do what I can to get for us. Exclusive. Exclusively. Period. So, Again, that's my little rant for tonight. I, never, I want to keep my word. I know what I said earlier at the range with those lone wolves. That's a shooting family. And you could be a shooting family too. And watch this. For my ex or my current law enforcement male and female officers, whether in Maryland or in Maine, or in California, because I'll come to you wherever you're at. You need training. You need some more training. I know police officers that don't go to the range. Captains. What's up, Eddie? Lieutenants. Chiefs. Sergeants. Or just regular old officers. I know you're not going to the range. Some of you got dust on your guns because you haven't used it since your last re since your last uh, requalification you know what I'm saying a lot of people don't want to shoot their guns but I'm telling you right now uh, if you are in law enforcement right now if you're an attorney if you're a prosecutor if you're a judge you're a police officer if you're in that law enforcement field you need additional training you need to practice you need to go to the range every now and then just to stay sharp. So I'm telling you right now, 
you have my information, go to Lone Wolf Firearms Training on Facebook. You see my list of services. I am not expensive. I'm reasonable. But at the end of the day, as you can see, I'm one of the few firearms instructors who will take my clients to the range, not knowing if they're going to reproduce what I said, but just believing in what I put in them, that they're going to do what I told them to do. And, they, and you're getting real-time results. You're not getting no a snapshot, no pictures. You're seeing me put them silhouettes up, empty, with no bullet holes, and you're seeing them shoot down range, and you're seeing that silhouette come back, and you're seeing real-time results. That's when you know that you're a master instructor. That's when you know that you're a master teacher. That's when you know that you are a marksman, when you can tell people what to do in a classroom, and they go to the range and reproduce it at the range. So I don't run from who I am, what I'm doing. I'm a master instructor. I'm a master, master marksman. And I teach you how to be effective gun owners and users. And let me tell you something. I did policing for like 20 some years, right? It's one thing to be in the academy and learn how to shoot the gun. It's another thing to be an instructor. We didn't really have the level of instruction that I'm giving folks right now in the academy. I'm sorry to say that. No, we, no, no, no. And I dare say this, nationwide, the majority of the instructors in whether it's a federal, a municipal, a county agency, nine times out of ten, they are not nationally certified. They're not. I can say I am nationally certified to teach handgun anywhere in this nation. They are not nationally certified. They have maybe applied for a position on their job. They got the position within their job, but they're not recognized outside their job. I'm recognized outside the job. I'm recognized in every state. Okay? I can go around the world teaching guns. So, again, you've known me on social media being black, 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 black. You've recently seen me post articles, reposting stuff I did said years ago. Because the stuff I said years ago is relevant today as it was yesterday. So I ain't really got to even post nothing. Just repost what I said. But what I'm doing right now, the biggest difference is right now, I went from telling you guys to arm yourselves, to get ready for what's about to happen, to me becoming the same thing I told you to do. I said, I'm going to become a fire instructor so I can teach my folks how to protect themselves. Rarely do you, rarely do you see people decide to do what they told others to do. Okay? So we have no more excuses. I'm not letting no brother, no sister off the hook right now. And I, I, again, I keep telling you, you don't worry about the money you don't have. My main thing is this, that you're able to protect yourself Protect your family, protect your community, and most of all, protect this culture that we have just given to everybody. We have not put no respect on it. So I says, I reposted, I reposted a quote that I said some eight years ago. I said, the proof of love is the willingness to protect, right? But I've evolved that comment to now that the essence of love is the willingness to protect. And I can dare say right now, in foundational black American communities, or African American communities, or the colored communities, or the Negro communities, that we have not protected the very people, the very children that we say we love. We've turned our most precious resources, not our houses, not our cars, 
not our jewelry. We've we've turned our most precious resources over to people who can't stand them. Okay, we have not protected the children. Let me say this again. The essence of love or the proof of love is the willingness to protect. The proof of love in any relationship, in any any creature who bores a child, is are you willing to protect that child, that baby, when it's born? And we have not protected our children. And that's why we're seeing the carnage, the damage, the revolt, the revolt again from the babies, from these youngers now, because they sensed, or they begin to see, oh, we weren't protected. We've lived, we've, we've, we've surrendered black men, or the male species in our collective have surrendered our responsibility and give it to other people to defend and protect our most precious resources. And it's not gold, it's not diamonds, it's not minerals, it's the precious children. And not just the children that are living, even the ones who've been aborted. The millions who've been aborted through Planned Parenthood, and kept secret by the church or the mosque or the temples okay or you know in our community you know we, you know we had these we, we we just we just have not protected our children okay again the essence or the proof of love is the willingness to protect okay so we need to get back to protecting the ones we love okay Period. Protect their babies. Marvin Gaye had that song. What about the children? What, 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 let me see if I can find that song. Marvin Gaye's song. What about the children? Because we 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 just COVID nineteen again. I cannot stress. I'm so thankful. Let me say this right. COVID nineteen again was an awakening for me and it showed no leadership bad leadership and no vision and i keep saying this over and over again COVID 19 showed me personally that we have not uh, did right by our own black collective we have nothing to show for and i, I wrote a nice little dissertation on my on my page about which 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 generation literally turned their back on the children See if I can find that. See if I can find that. Because I, I really didn't want to go into a long spiel tonight. You know, because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find my questions. I couldn't find my questions. But um, I want to. Let me see what. I, let me find. What, let me. See. Hey, everybody on board. I see you, uh, Patrice. I see you, Eddie. One love. I see you, Casino Queen. Carol. I don't know who else is on board. I can't see no more, but I, those are the names I saw right now. I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you for taking time out your day to even listen to me. I appreciate it. It's not what you're doing. It's not on deaf ears. And um, I'm hopefully that I'm making a difference and I'm changing some hearts and changing some minds and, and I'm setting some captives free. That's my goal, to set the captives free. Um, or to, you know, change the world. When you change the world, you change yourself. So, I'm not rambling, but I'm just trying to find something that I wrote some time ago. I want to thank everybody again for taking time out and looking at that, 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 that virtual town hall meeting. Very powerful. It's up to 382 views. I'm glad about that. Um, but I want to read something that I wrote. Because I think it's important, and then I'm gonna let you go, let you go, and then you can just share this on tomorrow. I'm gonna try to find those questions. I'm gonna try to find those questions that that was on the panel that I didn't get a chance to, that I did not get a chance to answer. But I'm going to find those questions and I'm gonna answer them. 
And Eddie, I hope that you can uh, be there when I go live because Eddie is a, a, an attorney and, and I would love to hear his keen insights on some things that I say about absolute immunity or uh, qualified immunity. Okay, so this was the post I wrote five days ago and it's talked about there was a quote in the Batman Dark Knight when the brother said either you die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain and um, I added either you die a hero or you live long enough to be see yourself exposed and become a villain because a lot of uh, the older generation who who have been in leadership role for so long with the COVID-19 situation, it exposed, it, it's, it literally has exposed that when all this bragging about $1 trillion spending power, $1 billion spending power, or $1 million spending power, it, it, we don't have nothing to show for her. Nothing. It's like rappers that go out here and buy chains and cars, but no land, no property. They have nothing to show for it. You know, after a while, you know, what, 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 you own a house? No, but I got a chain on my neck. I got, I got the latest clothes, the latest jewelry, but you don't have nothing to show for it. So I, so I wrote this right. I said, um, it's one thing for me to read it, one thing for me to write it, another thing for me to read it to you, and hopefully you can capture what I'm about to say. I said, this is a long post, but it's worth the read. Uh, this is the current state. I believe that this is the current state of foundation black Americans or African Americans. What do you call yourself? Native African Americans. Leadership, leadership, not the not the collective, but the leadership. Because we've been had some real bad leadership, and we've been celebrating bad leadership for so long. We can't even recognize it because you don't. We think because somebody's been there for a long time that they did a good job. That's not the case. Say either you die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself exposed and become a villain, the dark night. So, again, in the era of COVID-19, this is the era we're in, 2020, most foundation black American preachers, politicians, I didn't say all, I said most politicians, preachers, civil rights leaders, and business leaders who started out as heroes have become villains in the eyes of the younger black American generation. Okay. The current, the current generation X, which I am, Y, Z, and the millenniums. I mean, that's not the millenniums, but I'm gonna add them. The millenniums have lived long enough to see that COVID-19 took the mask, unmask, and showed the neglect and the complete betrayal by leaders within the black boomers, baby boomers, black baby boomer generation, and leaders within the black silent generation of the last 60, 70 years, okay? And they say everybody, I'm talking about just the leadership. The leaders of the baby boomers and the silent generation within the foundation of black American collective sold out the black collective for preaching promotions, pledges, prestige, promiscuity, profit margins, personal gain, personal profits, and personal success, okay? COVID-19 exposed the entire misleadership role, no leadership role, and the lack of vision from those that were elected or selected as our leaders within our collective. COVID-19 highlighted the lack and non-existent of factories. We have no factories, okay? And industries that was never created by blacks for blacks during their tenure. We have been here the longest in this country foundational black Americans have been here the longest than any immigrant, any of those black and brown coalition, any of the uh, 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 immigrant coalition. We've been here longer than anybody 
outside of the indigenous population, the native the native Indians. But we have nothing to show for. We have nothing to show for. It's not like we. It, it, it's not like when we came out of slavery from 1619 to 1865, and the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves allegedly, and we had nothing because we'd already built everything. They freed us, but we had nothing because we had built everything for the white society. So, some 2020, we have nothing to show for. We've, we told our kids, told our children to go to school. Good, good grades and a job will be there for you and that's not the case okay so COVID-19 highlighted that there are no black owned steel factories not copper factories not plastic factories the very things we use every day copper plastic for your water jugs, water bottles, steel, aluminum factories. We use aluminum foil for what we're cooking. Brass factories, you know, paper factories. What would we do without paper? Toilet paper, writing paper. We have We own none of them. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? Medical supplies factories. We're always going to the doctors. Medical supplies. The gauzes. The 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 the, the band aids. We have nothing. Light bulb factories, right now, I'm using lights. We don't own nothing. Uh, battery factories, your cell phones, your cars, your flashlights, nothing. Distribution centers, every country, every country, every nation had distribution centers. Somebody owns the distribution centers. Name me one black person who has a distribution center. Just one. Just one black company that's a distribution center where he can send stuff out and receive nationwide imports exports we have not one shipping companies shipping companies name one black shipping company just one okay tractor trailer companies ammunition facilities firearm factories and gun manufacturers name one black company there's none there are no black-owned airplane factories, hotels, grocery stores, department stores, retail stores, landscaping, you name it, companies, metro transit companies, gas stations, paper, paper factories, clothing factories, hospitals. I mean, the list just goes on. COVID-19 ex exposed that we don't have, we have not built nothing but codependency on others. So let me just move on down. Like I said in the first paragraph, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself exposed and become the villain. The past black leadership generation was so blinded by pushing black spending power narrative that they never saw that they were creating a black underclass and, and, and promoting black group economic suicide. Say this again. We've been promoting black group economic suicide we have produced a whole black underclass permanent black underclass because everybody else had the jobs in the stores in the factories we have nothing to show for but the rap in the music industry which we don't even own that okay you ask the question where do we go from here my answer we build we build every factory company and industry that is mentioned above and we build the ones that's not named so we need to look we, we need to find somebody within our collective to go and get these light bulb factories to build these battery factories to build these medical supply factories industries ammunition facilities we need that right now we need it we need to become selfish and practice group economics group self-reliance and black group self-confidence for the preservation and the survival of our collective. We cannot continue to practice economic suicide and depend on other ethnicities for our survival. We have been here the longest and we have nothing to show for. 
That's what I wrote five days ago. And I'm passionate about that because, again, it's hard for me to spill praises on some of the older black leadership when I see that you've left us with nothing. Nothing. Okay? So, look, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to come back on here tomorrow. It won't be this late for sure. Uh, but I'm going to find those questions that was asked on that panel. And I'm going to try to give you my explanation of qualified immunity, absolute immunity. Should, I, should we defund the police department? Um, 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 um. And, and, and the things you need to do right now, if you are a victim of police brutality and you survive, I can tell you what to do because I survived police brutality. So I want to tell you one of the first things you can do. Well, I'll, I'll give you one right now. If you are a survivor of police brutality, number one, the first thing you do is get some composure. Get some composure because you'll be mad. You're going to be upset. You're going to be angry. You're going to want to hurt somebody. And this is the time or you get you a piece of paper or you get you your voice memo on your phone and you begin to write down everything that happened every detail what was said what wasn't said what you was wearing what they was wearing what you smelled because you don't know how long the case gonna last and everything you write is important from the time of the assault even back before the assault what you were doing that day leading up to the assault. Okay. That is important. You want to capture that whole day because you're telling the story. Not, not just the assault, but what you was doing prior to the assault that led up to the assault and after the assault. So get a voice memo, get a paper and pencil, and begin to write. That's the first thing you do. You write what happened. What was your mindset like? What was you doing? I remember, I mean, I visually remember what I was watching on television the day I got assaulted by the police department. What I had ate that day. You know? And I put all that in my complaint. I put all that in my complaint because. I need you to see, I wanted to paint a picture of how my day was going before I got assaulted by the police. That I was chilling. What? I, I just got dropped off from the house. TV was on. I'm chilling. Go to my mailbox. I'm not anticipating getting beat by the police. I put all that into my story. You're telling the story. Not just what they did to you. What you was doing prior to you getting your tail shot or assaulted and you lived to tell your story. So that's one nugget I'm going to tell you. That's one. Gain some control of yourself. And begin to write everything. Or take your voice memo out and start the talking. Because you're going to get that information to your lawyer. Or you're going to use that information to file your complaint against the police department or that officer. Okay? I'll pick up on this tomorrow on the second thing you do and the third thing you do if you survive uh, a brutal attack from the police department. And I'm speaking from experience. This is not theory. Like I said, I got assaulted in 7-23-2001. What, this is 7 27 2020. This was 19 years ago. I got assaulted. And it took me about 10, almost, almost eight years before I even saw a dime before it came to a before it came to an end. Because again, when you start making complaints and start getting lowered up, it's gonna be a long process. And you gotta be willing to, to wake that thing up. Gotta tough it up. Okay, so again, I'm going to bring it to a close. I'm going to bring it to a close. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, I thank you. I apologize for coming so late, but I want to keep my word. But again, I can't find the questions 
that was that was sent to the panel for the for the uh, for the uh, town hall meeting on the 25th. I would encourage you to go back and, re and and revisit that town hall meeting. It was a very informative town hall meeting by the one million, and I think that again. We gave some very precise, we gave some very um, clear, well thought out instructions and highlighted, we really highlighted, and I guess having me on the panel really, really highlighted uh, the police brutality and how we can deal with that in the 21st century. So again, again I want to thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you. I do. I want nothing but the best for you. Um, but I need you to be serious about protecting yourselves. Again, I don't have the luxury right now to go into the black, 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 black argument. Because um, I see that right now, I need to get y'all ready for what's around the corner. And, and what's around the corner is, it's a fight. And I'd rather you be ready for the fight than you getting ready for the fight. Be ready for the fight. Okay, so again, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Remember this, uh, the essence of love and the proof of love is the willingness to protect. Okay? And always remember, as I end every broadcast, it is not how much you know. It's how much you care. With that said, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. All the tuned in. And I will see you on tomorrow. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Uh, have a peaceful night's sleep. And um, we'll pick this up tomorrow for sure. And not real late. I promise you. Stay encouraged. God bless.